Well, it's that time again, guys. With the season having come to a close, I'm left asking myself something no one with common sense should even care to ask. Does Smiling Friends have depth within its themes? Or is it just comedy for the sake of comedy? Just an outlet for Michael and Zach's creativity and nothing else? I'd like to return to the classics. Hey, hey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more Smiling Friends related content. It's a small gesture of kindness, but it means the world to this micro-sized channel. And if there's another show you'd be interested in Mr. Boone covering, comment below. Additionally, Season 2 might be over, but there's still plenty of subjects to cover. And hey, maybe Mr. Boone will give YOLO Crystal Fantasy a fair shot, so let us know what you'd like to hear talked about. So with that out of the way, let's get back to the nasally chaps yapping. Now, I already know what many of you are probably thinking. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Heck, I saw it in my previous video's oh. comments. And I can't really blame anyone for reacting this way. It's just a kid show. There are no double meanings or deep messages. And what happens when you combine genius writers with metatextual references and pure insanity? Skin theory. Go outside, nerd. Smiling Friends is a show that is clearly meant to evoke laughs and entertain above all else. Zach has even said as much. To some, it might feel absurd to say that the show has any level of philosophical depth or that each scene is a painting of the human psyche, which I need to repeat, I never actually said that last bit. I imagine many people were assuming I was trying to say that the show was on par with something like Evangelion. So I could imagine, yeah, if that was what you assumed I was going for, not exactly the best optics wise. However, I would have to say that many of these responses were likely more gut reactions to my thumbnail and title, which probably gave them flashbacks to the days of, you really need a high IQ to understand Rick and Morty shit posting. But even still, if those people heard me out, they'd see that I was never trying to say Smiling Friends is some epic we did it Reddit attack on nihilism or a show with deeper meaning. No, Zach and Michael, despite being pretty smart guys, aren't the kind of people to be that unself aware and pretend their show is some bastion of sage philosophical knowledge. And while I'm pretty sure that Zach would probably rib me for making a video like this in my previous one, Mr. Boone, you fucking Andrew, stink. And stink. We're on to you. I mean, he's ribbed YouTubers who've spoke about a show for far less. Go read some YouTube videos. Go read some YouTube videos. Here's something on that little yellow guy. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Ego Raptor. Yeah. <laughs> But he'd also likely find it cool to see fans enjoy talking about his work in any capacity, really. As being a creative myself, I actually really enjoy when I hear anybody discuss anything I've done personally. Even though, admittedly, the first video I ever uploaded to YouTube was something in one of my experimental film classes, which led to a bunch of, let's just say, somewhat cringy comments below for something that I intended to just be an assignment that I turned in. But hey, that's kind of what happens with creative works. They kind of take on a life of their own once you put them out for everyone to view. However, I want to be crystal clear here. I do not think Smiling Friends is some too deep for you series. I don't even think anybody would claim that Rick and Morty was ever trying to be that either, except perhaps the dude who says he's the Rick of your friends. However, something I found interesting while watching the show was that you could make out various claims about its meaning and you'd likely be right. However, a joke would almost always cut in and obscure whatever obvious meaning there was since comedy was always the goal of Smiling Friends. In fact, I wouldn't be too surprised if someone out there saw the final scene of episode 6 and thought it was some epic Flat Earth is real, see guys? The crackhead blue man character David Firth voices was right all along, and you all see me as him. I'm the blue guy. I'm right. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. While Rick and Morty is synonymous with nihilism and edgy Rick wannabes, Smiling Friends seems to be the antithesis of that. But not in an overt way where they're trying to literally say that in any episode despite what people want to say online. While trying not to say anything profoundly, Smiling Friends has become a thematically rich show, contrasting its darker themes with its contemporaries. While it's not trying to be BoJack Horseman in any way, it certainly values positive themes in an otherwise chaotically uncaring world and tries to put a smile 
in your face without trying to prescribe you any philosophy. While some episodes of Smiling Friends quite literally have no meaning, an Alan adventure, and who murdered Simon as Salty come to mind, it's undeniable that the show has a running theme of positivity and an overarching narrative of facing nihilism and embracing the absurd. In my previous video, I avoided mentioning the pilot as I felt everything that could have been said about that episode had already been said. I still somewhat to a degree believe that, however, the pilot was the initial thematic linchpin of the entire series. While the animation and comedy were always the core of Smiling Friends, its heart was facing the absurdity of life. The world the Smiling Friends live in is chaotic, but each character faces it with purpose. By the end of the first episode, the depressed Desmond finds purpose in the chaos, accepting how absurd life is through the gratification of absolutely murderizing Bliblies as a business. Nonsensical, but that's life. You find your own meaning. The same can't be said for Pym, however, but this was likely more than anything played for laughs, with his hyper-realistic style capping the episode's nihilism theme. Huh. I guess Desmond just needed to find the purpose of life. <laughs> <laughs> This episode really set the tone for those to come, and set an example for just how nightmarish the visuals in the show can get. While episodes like Frowning Friends and Mr. President play off their anti-nihilistic themes for jokes, the themes are still there. That's the beauty of Smiling Friends. It doesn't need to spell everything out for you. The President episode, for instance, suggests through its plot outcome that assuming your vote is meaningless is incorrect. Gleb's vote causes a win for Mr. Frog, implying that everyone's role in the grand scheme is significant, even if a group of media workers decide to attempt to change the outcome. The same kind of joke plays out in Frowning Friends, where Grimm and Gnarly both spend the episode trying to convince 3D Squelton and everyone of the problems of the world being far too much, making everything meaningless. The two obviously fall more in line with what Michael and Zack would describe as humorous dynamics of opposing forces, less a thematically important message, and more a lightning rod of funny interactions. Try to, uh, like, formulate stuff. The way we find it to be easy is just taking a singular character. Basically, we, we literally just said, like, what is the funniest or most interesting person to oppose this? So it started off kind of roughly as, you know, like you mentioned, like, you know, optimist and kind of, like, I think the, one of the first drawings we had of the characters roughly as they were was Charlie with those angry eyebrows and him smiling. It's like, okay, Yet, this still doesn't take away from the fact that the two frowning friends are shown to be nothing more than frauds by the end of the episode. While not exactly saying that nihilism is bad, the message is clear. Most of these armchair existentialist philosophers are only huffing their own farts and ultimately just want to wave around what they claim as facts as a means to leverage themselves above others, like a kid who learns Santa doesn't exist. Their idea that nothing matters because they're gonna die someday instantly crumbles the moment the boss appears with an M16 to their heads. So, despite what Zack says, it still remains that the show has some very clear themes, themes that even Michael himself had said are definitely there. Yeah, we don't want to send like this crazy big message or anything, so... And people turned it into that anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's there in a subtle sense, but that's only for like, like we, like I say, just like a little observation. It's not really a, it's not a big, oh, you, you're an idiot if you're a nihilist. Like, it's not that, it's not a... They just don't attempt to overstate them. Much like a joke, over-explaining the theme of your own art, which has its roots in comedy, is often something that is frowned upon. Even if Michael and Zack don't want to appear self-important by explaining them, the themes are most definitely there. The magic of Smiling Friends is in the multiple readings you can get from any given joke or punchline. They just don't wish to appear as though they're up on a soapbox about anything in particular. Since at the end of the day, nobody wants to be preached to while watching an Adult Swim show at 3am most likely high out of their mind. Hell, even in small moments like the forest demon that was accused of blackface, people online apparently read that as some epic own on the left, when that couldn't even be further from the truth. He had a problem with the, the blackface joke at the end. He's like, yeah, and it led up to saying like, oh, raging liberals are crazy. Yeah, like, dude, yeah. shut the fuck up. Yeah, what are you talking crazy about? Crazy liberals. It's like, <laughs> we didn't put that anywhere. Again, that's, like a, that's the Rorschach test. Yeah. Of someone looking at that going, yeah. oh, I get where you're Reading going. More Personally, while I enjoy Smiling Friends for not spelling everything out, there's something fun about analyzing its themes, or lack thereof. The point of interpretive analysis is to create a possible reading of a text, not to prescribe a concrete meaning. Much like the timeless English 101 meme you probably learned in high school, of the curtains being blue, or a cigar just sometimes being a cigar, Smiling Friends can inhabit both spaces of meaning, nothing and something. And although I ultimately don't fully subscribe to 
the idea of death of the author, I find intrinsic value in finding meaning in things that may seem to lack it. Not too different from the way Pym and Charlie try to ascribe meaning to Desmond's life. Life's just far more fun when you do silly things like that, alright? <laughs> so sue me. If there's one core takeaway I want to get across, it's that Smiling Friends is a show that holds both plenty of meaning and also none at all. Not too dissimilar from life. Do you choose to be Pym, unable to face the absurdities of life at the end of the pilot? Or Glep, a silly little critter who faces the absurdities of life with his own ascribed meaning, watching YouTube videos. But then again, that's just my thoughts. Smiling Friends Season 2 was peak Adult Swim, and we already have another season confirmed, along with another YouTuber show, who if you haven't already seen in meme form, check out his channel because he's actually got some pretty hilarious stuff, and I couldn't be more excited for his TV show to come out. Here's to more years of creative television on Adult Swim, and let's try our damnedest not to have a Szechuan sauce moment. I'm looking at you, friend who thinks they're the Rick of the Friend group. 